During the quest for the exotic glaive and steps at the evidence board, we gathered some information from the Hidden and Anna Bray about Rasputin, that he issued Yuga Sundown before the darkness got to him on Mars, shutting down his protocols to help humanity to protect himself, to survive. In his last message, the supercomputer spoke of Mars, the Moon, Earth, etc., but also a place called the Nephili Stronghold, a place with no current record. When Anna Bray went in to check on this for the hidden, this data was removed. So today we're going to speculate what the Nephili Stronghold may be, a digital cloud interface, Ephrodite's group on the edges of the system, or something else. Let's discuss. Before initiating Yuga Sundown, Rasputin killed all protective measures in place for human colonies and settlements. It was a big list of code names for the Moon, Mars, Earth, the Exodus ships, etc. But Rasputin also refers to a place called the Nephili Stronghold. No record on that in any of our databases. A follow-up message from Anna Bray brings up more questions than it answers. To Chalco. No hit on Nephili's stronghold in any of Rasputin's records. Can't even find the original transcript you're quoting. If it's real, someone removed all traces of it. And if they did, they did it so cleanly that I'd suspect Rasputin himself. So from that text, we don't really get much. Just that Rasputin mentions this place when speaking about other places he's protected, like the moon, Mars, Earth, and then you have this stronghold. It isn't surprising considering Rasputin was made to protect our whole solar system, but the fact that we and other characters like Anna Bray, who's closest to the War Mine, have no clue where this place is and what it means. I mean, even Ikora's spies in the Hidden are stumped as well. This place, though, seems like it was under his protection for a reason, and maybe that's what makes it so special, that it is hidden somewhere out of sight, somewhere our enemies wouldn't dare to look. Let's speculate on some ideas here. First up, the digital cloud or a mindscape. Nephili is close to the word Nephili in Greek mythology, which means goddess of the clouds. Cloud could have multiple meanings here. First, what about the cloud, like cloud computing in the digital mindset? What if Rasputin created his own dimension or has been creating one to keep humanity safe? It may sound kind of crazy at first, but just think about how the distributary formed. We already have something like this in Destiny with a pocket dimension where the Awoken lived. In recent lore, we also hear about nested universes and black holes, and would Rasputin be capable of creating something like this? It's hard to tell, him simulating a safe haven where humans could not be harmed. The other option could refer to some type of cloud in our solar system, like a physical one. First, in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, there is a straight-up asteroid called 431 Nephili. So, is this the destination the war mine spoke of out near the reef, some hidden outpost? And two, there's also the Oort Cloud, which is a spherical shell surrounding everything in the solar system, a thick shield of icy rock and space debris. This Oort Cloud is located deep in the system, which makes me think of another possibility when it comes to destiny, and that is Aphrodite's group. Lady Aphrodite is an Iron Lord like Lord Saladin and reappeared in Rise of Iron to run the Iron Banner. Her Grim War card said this, Now Aphrodite serves as the new Iron Banner representative while Lord Saladin devotes his attention to the Siva Crisis. She urges Guardians to see the Banner Tournament as a chance to strengthen their light, for fighting and for more metaphysical purposes. The Vanguard are also intrigued by Ephrodite's accounts of a non-military guardian community in the Deep System. But Ephrodite, though happy to talk about the group's pacifist philosophies, refuses to disclose the settlement's location at present. No statue for me, I see. The statues are for the dead. And I always hoped you were not among them.
So Ephrodite is a part of a non-militaristic guardian community in the deep system. This group of guardians is clearly different. They don't want war, they're pacifist, but are hidden and clearly have ways to keep it that way. Perhaps this is why Aphrodite appeared to run the banner in that short amount of time, to try and convert some guardians to their ways and truly survive the darkness without a war. Is the Nephili stronghold just another Clovis Bray facility? That could definitely be a possibility here. Along the likes of Braytac, Freehold, Europa, the Deepstone Crypt, and even something on Enceladus, we know Clovis Bray had many installations across the system. In the web lore titled Rust that Bungie posted, Anna and Rasputin stumble upon something ancient, a Clovis Bray facility that was previously unknown. Anna flicks a sideward glance over her shoulder at her ghost before selecting Warm Mind Network Bypass. No, but it looks like this system has backdoors all over. She toggles through a list of shadow networks, production facilities, and connected pillory stations. It's not Atlas, but it's a start. There are 11 other stations like this. There's a whole subnet defense network completely disconnected from the War Mines Initiative. Anna steps back. Why? Jinju circles the screen. Wise right, Anna dives back into the terminal. The facilities listed span the system, Earth and Luna, Europa, asteroids adrift now belonging to the shore, Mars, naturally, even so far as Uranus. That station, an orbital, caught her eye. Echo, she flicks back to the previous menu. Echo Link, one of these stations has a pending request. So in that lore, Anna, her ghost, and Rasputin are experimenting around Mars and find one of Clovis's hidden facilities. You can see she mentions there's a bunch of others like them, and one specifically is pending a request. One of these facilities was near an asteroid, which would be cool if it was 431 Nephili, but you never know. Destiny also had a city during the Golden Age called Kair Lyrian, which was a Golden Age orbital city that plummeted to Earth's surface during the collapse. That's thanks to Destinypedia. So it would seem all that's left of Kair Lyrian is ruins, but what else is out there? Is there some floating city? This last one is a little crazy, but I thought I'd throw it in for fun. Is it something that the Drifter has mentioned before? In Artifacts and Old Friends, Drifter says he's been to these places. He says he's seen the deep side of Jupiter, been to the core mines of Saturn, name drops old myths no one's heard, the Luvial Crux, the shift chasms below Elios, the fourth tomb of Nezarek, goes on about the idols of Lower Sol, the treasure of Exodus Prime, the solar engine of Dead Star 6. Now, no real evidence here, but Drifter's been to some weird places and brought some weird things back, like that icy moon where he encountered those creatures, so I wouldn't be surprised if somehow the Drifter knew of this Nephili stronghold. Anyway, Guardians, that's all we got for today's video. Let me know your theories and what you think this stronghold is in the comments down below, and when we might see it in future seasons. If you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching. My name's Evade, and I'll catch you, Guardians, in the next one.